Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. Hail Hydra. So this week's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was a direct continuation from the end of the events from Winter Soldier, the movie. So it really is like the beginning of the final arc on the show. So what I'm going to do is I'll talk about how the show and the movie are integrated, you know, what the plot is, it's working together. Then I'll do my top five moments in my review. I'm also going to talk about some of the ramifications about some of the big changes that happened during Winter Soldier and how that's going to affect season two of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. if it does get renewed because there are some big changes that happened. Also, quick heads up, all those big changes that are happening, they also affect the plot of what Captain America 3 is probably going to be. So I'm going to do a movie video for that tomorrow morning. Be sure to subscribe to get it. It's going to be all about Secret Avengers. It'll be a lot of fun. So first things first, let's talk about how Winter Soldier the movie integrates with this episode. Careful for spoilers if you haven't seen the movie or if you haven't seen this episode yet. The timeline is like this. The Hydra Helicarrier strike started right before this episode started. The end of Winter Soldier, you know, whenever Captain America destroys them, happens just as they are capturing Agent Garrett and his men. When Victoria Hand said that Captain America's whereabouts are unknown, that's about the time he was at Nick Fury's grave with Anthony Mackie. Nick Fury still wants everyone to think he's dead, so Coulson and Hand still don't know that he survived. He's off trying to track down more rogue Hydra agents. Chris Evans and Anthony Mackie are basically doing the same thing, only separately. They're tracking down the Winter Soldier and more Hydra agents. The movie and this episode pretty much ended at the same time. Obviously the show has five more episodes left in the season, so we can talk more about where things are headed in my top five moments. But here we go. Number five, Sky decodes the Hydra message on the bus. The message was sent to all Hydra double agents, just telling them to seize control of S.H.I.E.L.D. That went out while they were launching the helicarriers in the movie. That was when Crossbones and Robert Redford basically revealed who they were. I love the reaction of Coulson and the crew, but because I, like everyone else in the world, saw the movie last week, it wasn't as big of a surprise for me as it was for them. I love those lines though, out of the shadows and into the light, time to face the Hydra music. Which actually makes me wonder, what is the theme music for Hydra? Is it like the Star Wars Imperial March? Hmm. Number four, May comes clean about Tahiti. Before this, there were two people I thought she could have been reporting to based on her allegiance. Robert Redford and Nick Fury. I'm actually pretty glad she turned out to not be a double agent for Hydra. How cool is it though that she basically inceptioned their whole team into Coulson's head via Nick Fury. Like she gave Fury the idea for their names and Fury suggested them to Coulson and thus the team was born. I'm curious to see what her relationship with him will be like once the dust settles. I am expecting some sort of Hail Mary save in the finale so that Coulson will start trusting May again, but you know, until then she's going to be an ally, but not a friend. Number three, Victoria Hand's epic Hydra fakeout. Just one of the many awesome fakeouts in the episode. When we saw the end teaser last week that revealed, you know, she was remote piloting the plane, I was pretty sure she was not the clairvoyant. So when she gave them that Hydra speech, I was actually pretty surprised. In the comics, Victoria Hand worked for Hammer, but she is an outright evil like a Hydra agent. I was actually pretty relieved whenever she took it all back and said that they passed the test. Had she have been an actual Hydra agent, they probably would have eventually had to kill her off the show unless she was going to become some new big bad. And there really wasn't anything I saw on the show that led me to believe she was going to become some new big, you know, masters of evil big bad. Number two, Garrett is revealed is the actual clairvoyant. Surprisingly, not the biggest reveal in the episode. Bill Paxton does such an amazing job of playing sleazebag characters. How could we not have known that he would turn out to be the sleazebag double agent for Hydra? To be fair, he was not always Hydra. He said that he saw the wind blowing in their direction and just switched sides. So when he and Coulson were training together under Nick Fury, he was still on the good side. In the comics, Garrett's character eventually becomes part of the Avengers, but before that, he was a pretty big douchebag. So there's a lot going on with his character. I'll talk more about that in a second though. And my number one WTF moment, Ward is Hydra. Or is he? Huge reveal, Ward shoots Victoria Hand and the guards, so we're supposed to think he's either Hydra or just decided to turn right there on the spot. But wait, let's think about this for a second. Personally, I think that he's just playing Garrett in order to uncover, you know, who some of those other top level Hydra agents are. Like Ward is really a double double agent, you know, he's still a good guy. What about those gunshots though? Did he really kill Victoria Hand? We didn't see any blood, and remember, Coulson told them to use the Night Knight guns whenever they first landed at S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters. We never saw him switch guns, so he was probably still using the stun gun, and it only appeared he was using real bullets. I don't remember him ever telling Agent Garrett about the Night Knight gun technology. That was something that Fitz developed on his own, so it's not normal S.H.I.E.L.D. tech. Thus, I think that in a couple more episodes, we'll find out that Ward is on a secret mission for Coulson to find out who those other Hydra agents are. You know, he's not really a bad guy right now. 
here are actually a couple really big moments that I didn't want to include in my top five, but I thought were really cool nonetheless. First off, Garrett gives Agent Stillwell a big shout out for hiring a ton of Hydra agents. I guess he was a human resources person. Then, Garrett tries to recruit Fitz to be Hydra's new Arnim Zola. Next, May calls out Ward for having a total hard on for Sky. And then, Sky and Ward's, you know, let's have a drink moment. They are now officially the second biggest ship on the show next to Coulson and the Cellist. We're actually going to meet the Cellist pretty soon. She's going to be played by Amy Acker, so it's going to be really cool. But now it's your turn. Let me know. What was your favorite moment? Was it all the fake outs? Was it finding out that Garrett was the true clairvoyant? Or was it the big Ward reveal at the end? Overall, I rated the episode as a solid B+. It did a good job of incorporating this huge convoluted movie plot from Winter Soldier. That was a two and a half hour movie, not an easy job. And it revealed all these new layers in the existing characters. I love what they're doing with all the relationships on the team. You know, not just the sexual relationships, but the friendships too, like Coulson and May. I fully expect all those broken trust issues to be fixed by the end. But the Hydra cat and mouse chase is going to be so much fun to watch between now and then. There was also this really awesome interview that Kevin Feige did, and he talked about talking to Joss Whedon about the show and how it worked with Winter Soldier. They originally knew the plot of Winter Soldier before they knew about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s plot, and Joss Whedon was forced to kind of work within this idea of S.H.I.E.L.D. coming down. So they actually had to rewrite Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to work with Winter Soldier. Back to the episode though, they did have a couple really nice callbacks to some earlier moments, especially stuff that was in the fridge. One of my favorites was their reference to Gravitonium. I keep expecting Graviton to bust out of the fridge with all the chaos that's happening right now. But overall, the biggest surprise was that Arnim Zola was not the clairvoyant. It was actually Garrett, a real person all along. I was a little disappointed because I really liked the idea of AI being evil, you know, given what the plot of Avengers 2 is going to be with Ultron. The only other thing in the episode that I didn't really like was whenever they were carting Garrett off and they had that slow motion music montage. I think I would have liked it better if Triplet had just, you know, gone up and tackled him like the Hulk. But real quick, let's talk about what all this S.H.I.E.L.D. crashing down business says about Season 2 of the show. It also kind of ties in with the plot of what Captain America 3 is going to be too. So first off, the show has not been renewed yet, even though every single other show on ABC has gotten a renewal or cancellation notice. They haven't said anything about it, but I think that's only because they're trying to hide or at least hold off on revealing what's going to happen during the season finale. It's all about the plot of Secret Avengers, the comic. I'll be talking more about it during my Captain America 3 bonus video tomorrow because it's all about the destruction of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Captain America putting his own separate team together to go on covert missions because I kind of think if S.H.I.E.L.D. gets to Season 2, that's what Coulson and his team are going to do. They're just going to go on secret missions. Like I said, I'll be explaining all that stuff in the Captain America bonus video tomorrow. Be sure to subscribe to get it. Now, let me know, what are your final thoughts on the episode? Do you think it did a good job of kind of holding up the pacing and the tone of Captain America? I actually almost saw it a week ago. I feel like the episode would have worked better if I had seen the movie like right before seeing the episode, but it was still a lot of fun and I'm really excited to see where the show goes from here. Also, don't forget next week's episode is Patton Oswalt, so it's going to be a lot of fun. But you can click here to get that bonus Captain America 3 Secret Avengers video. I'll add the annotation as soon as I post it. And you can click here to get my other top choices for a Captain America 3 story. So thank you so much for watching. Hail Hydra. I'll see you guys tomorrow.